Late Night with the Devil is a 2024 film written and directed by Colin and Cameron Cairns and starring David Desmelchin. The basic premise is a talk show host has been experiencing failing ratings, and in an attempt to get them back, he brings on a girl who claims to be possessed by a demon, offering a live interview. This is all set on Halloween night of 1977, and is depicted mostly through found footage. Let me know what your thoughts are about the film, and found footage in general. This film was the brothers' third feature, after Hundred Bloody Acres and Scare Campaign, both of which received limited releases in Australia. This was their first wide release. When discussing the premise, they said, In the 70s and 80s, there was something slightly dangerous about late-night TV. Talk shows in particular were a window into some strange, adult world. We thought combining that charged, live-to-air atmosphere with the supernatural could make for a uniquely frightening film experience. Production for the film began in January of 2022, and filming started a few months later. It was done entirely in Melbourne, but was a co-production in the United States, Australia, and the United Arab Emirates. It would eventually premiere in March 2023 at South by Southwest, but had its theatrical release earlier this month. The film excels in a number of different areas. The first is the performance of Des Mouchin. He became the first choice for the role after the Cairns read an article he wrote for Fangoria about horror talk show hosts in the April 2021 issue. He is a huge horror geek, including authoring the Count Crawley series of comics, which has been ongoing for the last few years. He initially turned down the role, not because he thought the script was lackluster, but that it was too good, and he was unsure if he could do the character justice. He plays Jack Delroy, someone who has always been second best. The beginning of the film gives a brief overview of his history in TV, showing clips from his earliest shows, as well as his progression as the late-night host. There's a mix of charisma, nervousness, and arrogance that is difficult to pull off, but Desmalchian nails it. About a year prior to the events of the film, he lost his wife to cancer, and there's a profound sadness that highlights the differences between the Halloween show and the earlier ones. He's been barely holding it together while still believing that he can be the best, two traits that seem contradictory but establish a fully fleshed out character. The second highlight is the production design. The film is a period piece, and great care has been taken to all the sets, costuming, and effects to make sure it felt authentic. This means a lot of autumnal colors in the background, and in general a very warm feel to the whole film. The exception to this is the behind-the-scenes shots, which are entirely in black and white. This is to indicate the lower quality of the cameras, but also help distinguish the actual show from more extraneous elements. The effects are very well done, especially given the $10 million budget. There is some fun puppeteer work with giant worms and a few decent kills. Unfortunately, the finale is a bit CGI heavy, and feels like a letdown after the previous practical affairs, but there are still some well done moments. There are a few effective squares as well. One particular moment, when they're combing through the tape, looking frame by frame, just as a good build of tension, and the final scare that's not ruined by a loud noise or a jump cut, just letting the image speak for itself. Unfortunately, they are few in number, and while the film is certainly entertaining to watch, largely due to Dismalchian's performance, it's a bit lacking in horror for much of the runtime. While there is a lot to like about the film, as a totality, it just doesn't quite come together. It's good, but not great, and there are a few primary causes. One is as stated previously, it's just not particularly scary. Not that horror necessarily has to be, but there's a sense of dread or menace that just isn't there, when it feels like it should be. There's a lot of build-up to the special guest, the titular interview with the devil, but it's mostly a joke until the main event, resulting in a loss of tension. There is something clever about the structure of it, however, and that's via a bit of misdirection. One of the early guests is a skeptic, who was previously a magician. He shows off a few basic tricks and sets the stage for a larger one. That is, and spoilers here, the antagonist of the film is not the demon or devil that's being interviewed, but instead the vengeful ghost of Jack's wife. In the opening narration, it mentions Jack joining up with a secret society that was said to practice satanic rituals, as well as offer connections to get into businesses, like being a TV presenter. It's also mentioned that his wife got lung cancer suddenly, and medical experts were baffled. This is glossed over, however, and seems a minor part of the story. In reality, however, it is the main event. Throughout the film, there are brief glances of Jack's wife, Ghost, and reflections in still frames. These are easy to miss, although the later apparition is not. Combined with the final dream, where Jack envisions himself at the bedside of his wife just before she dies, it is revealed that he made a bargain, a deal of some kind to have the number one show, but he didn't know the price he would have to pay. His wife curses him in the dream, although it's likely more of a memory, as are all the events in the ending. While the demon, Mr. Wiggles, certainly was the catalyst for the events, they were not the driving force behind them. The demon opened the gates, but what stepped through was a very angry ghost with years of built-up resentment. 
When the demon actually possesses the girl, they seem confused and afraid, not something they would port into their later actions. The demon also said nothing to do with the earlier events with the fake psychic, who vomits black bile while calling out Jack's pet name for his wife. While it's certainly a ghost that causes the mayhem, it could be said the true villain is ambition, pure and simple greed, as it was Jack's bargain that set into motion the chain of events that would lead to a great many deaths. Much of this takes place outside of the found footage style, which is somewhat of a problem. In general, the subgenre is controversial, but while Late Night largely sticks to the format, there are times when it just becomes a film. In the behind-the-scenes shots, which are during commercial breaks, there's no reason for anyone to be filming, and certainly no reason for anyone to be as close to the characters as they are. This breaks the suspension of disbelief, and creates a separation that again erases the tension. This is more of a personal issue as well, but when Jack says let's go to a commercial, then it cuts, it could have been better to have fake commercials there. There could have been elements where the demon invaded them as well, flashes of a spooky face or ghostly visage. Instead there is a black and white stage stuff, which, while it offers more information about the characters, doesn't fit with the structure of the rest of the film. The finale, after a relatively bloody and explosive final confrontation, similarly ditches the framing technique, and follows Jack into a dream or vision or memory or whatever. While there are good moments in this, ultimately again feels disjointed, as what is being shown is supposed to be the footage of the last taping, an actual physical recording, and what Jack sees should have no part in it. If instead of seeing it from his perspective, we instead saw him going crazy, talking to the air, and miming actions, that could have worked. But that's not what it is. With all that in mind, I took it upon myself to re-edit the film, making some of the changes I believe would improve it. This was a quick job, but in general I took out everything that wasn't found footage style, added some authentic 1970s commercials during the breaks, and smashed a VHS filter over the whole product. It's certainly not perfect, and the ending is significantly more ambiguous, but I think it's a more interesting product. I could provide a link to that if anyone wants it. Late Night with the Devil is a perfectly fine film. It's well made, and shows a large amount of skill on both the director's and actor's parts. It falls just short of greatness, however, by not fully utilizing its premise, and failing to deliver enough creepiness that should have come with it. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Be well.